Center located in the city of West Memphis, Arkansas. My friends, I'm so excited about what God is doing. God is causing a shift to occur in this area. And I want to invite you out to be a part of the shift, the change that's occurring in this area. Interceding is located at 414 Thompson Avenue in the city of West Memphis, Arkansas. We have our Sunday morning services at 1030 a.m., which are powerful, action-packed services that bless us all. My friends, let's go into the sanctuary where the Lord dropped something into my spirit that he entitled, The Cost of Yes, The Price of No. Inside of we looked at the cost that it cost to be a Christian, but the price that you would have to pay if you do not accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let's go into the sanctuary and see what thus said the Lord. God bless. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful day, a beautiful day in which the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. If you would, take your Bible and go with me over to Hebrews chapter 11. For some reason, the Lord just won't let me away from Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. It seems like I've, I've preached on this thing at least two or three times in the last month. But glory to God, my God, at least two times in the last month. Hallelujah. Because, you know, what I've seen about God is God blesses those who have faith. Those who faithfully step out upon his grace. God blesses them. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning at verse 24. Amen. Amen. I got something I think will bless you on today, so pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11 chapter, chapter 11 chapter, beginning 24 verse. It says, by faith. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, by faith. By, by faith. faith. Say it loud, by, by faith. By, by faith. Say it until you believe it, by faith. By, by faith. faith. Hey. Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That ought to stick somewhere. Mm -hmm. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt. Mm -hmm. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith. Somebody say by faith. By, by faith. faith. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Ah. Through faith, somebody said through faith. Through faith. Right. He kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he be the, that destroyed the firstborn to touch them. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. They passed through the river Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do so were drowned. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory on this day. We give you praise for what it is you've already done. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that you would just be in the midst of everything that is said, everything that is done. We ask, Lord God, that you would bless those who may be traveling, Lord God, who are not here on this day, Lord God, that they may hear this word. And this word will help transform their lives. We give you glory and praise and honor. In the matchless name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Somebody said, thank God. Amen. 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 You already joined me in Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 24, I want to minister to you something calling for you to consider this term. The cost of yes and the price of no. Turn to your neighbor and say the cost of yes. The cost of yes. And the price of no. Price of oh yeah, you better understand that saying yes to the Lord is going to cost you something. Yes. It's going to cost you something. In the business world, that's a philosophy that we use in contracting that says there's a difference between cost and price. There's a difference between cost and price. This is a philosophy that's understood in the business world, and we separate out those two words, even though most of the time people use these words interchangeably. These two words mean somewhat the same, but not quite the same. Those two words, price, cost, and price. Cost is never as much as price. Uh -huh. Cost is never as much as price. When you ask a merchant, the cost of a merchant, they will never give you the cost because the cost is less than the actual price. It cost him $4 to purchase something that was made for $2 that you end up paying $6 or $7 for. Why is it because cost is less than price? I'm 
going somewhere with this, so somebody please stick with me. Costs are established at the place, at the point of delivery, uh, but 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 price is established when you get ready to buy it. Contained within cost is the raw material, the labor, utilities, the advertising that is turning on the light, turning off the light, the transportation thereof, the, the, the everything that's related to getting that item to the consumer. Price is never established in a factory. It only comes into play when it is sold by the retailer to you. Ever notice that the phrase is suggested retail price, not suggested retail cost? So those $150 Jordans that you wear were really made for $30. Yeah, yeah. They were transported from China for $10. Uh, there was $3 of labor inside of it, amen. They were advertised for $10, so all together that's 50 some dollars. But you went and you paid 150 if not more, for those very same things. So cost plus profit is the price. It takes cost plus profit, which is the price. Many people in history uh, uh, have, are witnesses to hey. this. One particular man was named Dietrich Bonhoeff. Uh -huh. Dietrich Bonhoeff in 1937, in the midst of, of, of a tyrannical government, uh -huh. wrote the book, The Cost uh -huh. of Discipleship. Uh -huh. His book was written and just released right after a man who was called a chancellor, who was called the Fuhrer, who was called by name Adolf Hitler, had come into power. And what his book talked about, it talked about the cost of discipleship. Part of the cost of discipleship is when people are not the same as you. You still love them. You do not tyrannize them. He did not stand up. He stood up against Hitler when it came to what he was doing to the Jews. His book was written, of course, because he stood up against Hitler. Eventually, he found his demise in that. In his book, he said that grace cheaply used isn't true grace. Many Christians have aligned themselves with the Nazi party at that time. And many had sold themselves out to the Nazi party at that time. They were justifying what they were doing because they thought they were following a good leader. But like all militaries at the time, there were people who were chaplains. And chaplains, even in the Nazi army, were sold out. They were sold out. They removed their crosses and put the swastik on them as their symbol of religion instead. They were sold out. And they gave over to themselves to be used by Hitler in the way that he used them. They were not righteous. Hallelujah. I heard you, Lord. I hear you. I hear what Moses was saying. He said, guess what? I would rather give up the short-term pleasure of this sin. Mm -hmm. And he called being a son of Pharaoh, a son of Pharaoh's daughter, a sin. I would give up the short-term pleasure of this sin to esteem what is to come. Hallelujah. What is to come. The thing is that, look. I will give up a life of fortune. I will give up a life of luxury. I will give up a life of all these things that are in the natural because I do not want these natural things to destroy who I'm going to be in Christ. I don't want these natural things to cause me to miss the blessing that God Almighty wants me to have. I don't want these natural things to be esteemed in such a way whereas I go to a sinner's hell because I esteem being the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It's something, though, to him to give up that. Pharaoh's daughter was a very powerful woman. And who was obviously a woman that was a very gentle soul. Mm -hmm. And she wielded a whole lot of influence. She had to wield a whole bunch of influence. How else could she fully be aware that the Pharaoh of Egypt, who had absolutely power, absolute power in Egypt, how else could she take on a Hebrew child when this favor had said that every Hebrew male child would be killed? How else could she take this on uh, when all of the people of Pharaoh, not just the Egyptians, but everybody, all the people of Pharaoh, to include the Hebrew slaves, had been told to kill every male child? Even though the midwives refused to do that. But they had been told on the penalty of death that they were to kill every male child. Uh -huh. So by definition, Pharaoh's daughter must have been a pretty generous, a pretty humble, a pretty kind person. Yeah. But by definition, she was breaking the law. Yes, 
He was breaking the law. So it must have been hard for Moses to understand or hard for Moses to make that decision to follow after the things of God instead of esteeming the things that were in the natural. Uh -huh. So Pharaoh knew that there was going to be a cost. Uh -huh. But he also knew that the price of no was too high for him to bear. Right. Pharaoh knew that it was, uh, uh, Moses knew that, that, that his very life was going to be in danger, but he did not care. See, we as Christians got to get on the same boat and realize that there is a cost of yes, but the price of no is too much for you to pay. Amen. So for Moses to refuse to prove his lifestyle was a deep divide. Not to mention the rejection of affection by his own people. The rejection of affection by the people of Egypt. The scorn that was sure to come because he had been clothed and fed by these people in Pharaoh's palace. But yet he rejected the privilege of being a palace. Man. Hallelujah. These people had fed him. They had educated him. They had clothed him. They had set him up to be basically in line to be the next pharaoh of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But he said no. He said no. He said the cost that I would pay is worth nothing compared to the price that I would pay ultimately. See, when I'm talking about cost, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about in the natural, the cost that it takes to pastor, the cost that it takes for you to go and give a testimony to your neighbor, the cost of you being rejected by people, the cost of you being put down by people, the cost of you not being accepted by people is not absolutely anything compared to the glory which shall be revealed in you at that coming day. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Yes. What an incredible act of faith. Doing so would be like denying your kinship to Bill Gates. If someone was related to Bill Gates or Mark Schultzberg or, or whoever the Facebook guy's name is, you'd be like, I'm his cousin, I'm his fifth cousin, 14 times removed. You will be all kinds of ways trying to get in on the get in. You'll be trying to get in on the get in, right? But see, you've got to understand that the cost of your yes to Christ is more valuable than silver and gold on this side of the Jordan. My God, my God. If someone was the, the relative to the Queen of England, you'd be like, yes, I am a relative. I'm a duke. I'm a earl. I'm a prince. I'm a, a leading lady. I'm a leading man. I'm a knight. You'd be trying to exhume. You'd be trying to exalt your relationship to the Queen of England. But you've got to understand the cost of yes, hallelujah, and, and, and is more significant than the price that you pay. It's take faith. Yes. It took a lot of faith. That's an incredible act of faith. Uh -huh. True faith looks beyond what's happening right now. Uh -huh. True faith looks into the future and says, this is what's going to happen. Right. True faith does not say that I am predicated upon what's going to happen now. But true faith says what is to come is a whole lot more important than what it is that I'm going through. True faith says that I thank God because on the other side, I'm going to receive all the blessings that I'm supposed to get. True faith says that I'll go through where I have to go through to arrive at where I need to arrive at. This is what true faith is. Yeah, 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 yeah. True faith says it's these Things in the natural are superficial. Uh -huh. Superficial cost of the natural. And this true faith says it determines that the spiritual price is greater than the natural cost. There are lessons for Christians in this thought here. Uh -huh. Here's one lesson. Lesson is that we must not seek worldly approval or adopt this world. That's right. <laughs> the Bible tells us that. We are not to conform to the know of this world. But we're supposed to be transformed how? By the renewing of our minds, by the renewing of our attitudes, by the renewing of our hearts, by the renewing. We're supposed to change this world. We cannot change this world if we're adopted to everything that this world has for us, my God. We've got to take a look at ourselves, take a look at everything that we do, and see if we're representing the Lord the way that we should be representing the world. Oh, my God, my God. See, if you say yes to the world, you're saying no to the cost and the cause of Christ. Jesus once said that no one begins building a building without counting up the cost. What a warning to all of us because it's going to cost you something to get everything that the Lord has to offer. 
Yes, salvation is free, but to keep it, it's going to cost you something. Yeah. Saying no to the cost <laughs> may have the short-term benefits. That what Moses said, he said about Moses, said that he did not want the short-term pleasure of sin. So saying no to the cost may allow you to have short-term benefits, but the price is greater than you want or can pay. Moses valued not the trappings of that life because he did it so that it, it came at a cost. But the cost pales in comparison to the price of no. He chose to suffer with his people. He looked away from the short-term reward of a previous life, valuing more eternal life. He did not look at Pharaoh as his king. Instead, he looked at King Jesus as his king who is yet to come. He did not look at the short-term life of Pharaoh that was sure to end and be even before his life, but he looked at the eternal glory that was revealed in Christ Jesus Amen. by faith. It takes faith to refuse the easy route. It takes real faith to refuse the easy route. I mean, when I first got saved, I was really got saved. I was in the army. I was on a, I was on a trajectory to end up at the very top of the ranks. I was on a trajectory to end up at the very top of the ranks. I had gotten my first senior rank promotion, and those other senior rank promotions were sure to come. I was in trajectory to be at the very top, but then I got saved. And when I got saved, all the people who were boosting me, who were pushing me, who was my partner, who were my peers, they seemed to have turned on me overnight. All those people I had, someone even told me, said, you think you're better than us. No, I'm not better than you. I'm saved. There's a difference. I'm not better than you. I'm striving. There's a difference. I could have easily just conformed to the ways that they wanted me to conform, which was to go out and hang out and party and do all these things they wanted me to do. I could have easily conformed. I could have easily conformed to those things, but those things would have been saying no to the Lord. Those things would not have allowed me to get into a position where I can enter into glory. Those things would have caused me to be condemned by the Lord. It's easy to take them, easy route. It takes faith to refuse the easy route, though. Moses' refusal became evident when he protected another Hebrew, knowing full well in doing so, he self-identified. He must have known that his act of protection would not escape the eyes and ears of the Egyptians, and it was an Israelite who was getting ready to sell him out. He was threatened to be sold out by a fellow Hebrew. The cost of yes included losing his very heritage. Can you imagine? The cost of yes caused you to lose your very heritage. Wow. Anybody ever been there? Oh, you've been there. You just don't know it. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The cost of yes. You are an African American. You identify as an African American. Okay? But you see something that is ethnically inherent in your people. And I don't use the word race because we're human race. Ethnically inherent in your people that's not quite right. And because you see that, you say, well, that's not quite right. And you you stand against that thing. And the people begin to threaten to pull your black card. Anybody hear me? People begin to threaten to just pull and call you everything except for what you really are. Let me move on. Amen. Amen. But it costs to be, it costs to be a servant of the most high God. You can't lay in bed all morning long and not get your prayer in. You cannot take food in all the time and not say a single Lord, I thank you, Lord, I appreciate it. You cannot get in your car and drive all the time and knowing you're driving on fuel and not say, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to make it through the next day. It costs you something. And the cost is often that the people of this world is going to reject you. But Jesus said that, guess what? I was rejected, so you're going to be rejected too. Just accept it. But the inheritance that I have for you is much greater than the cause of your rejection right now. Yeah. My God, my God. There are four royal people in the Bible that made a notable refusal. These people being Moses, David, Daniel, and finally Jesus. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. David refused the armor of King Saul. Daniel refused to eat the king's meat. And Jesus refused to worship the enemy. Huh? Hallelujah. The refusals caused them not to be as popular as they would have been if they hadn't refused. There are Christian artists. There are Christian artists that have to be very careful because they'll find themselves in a position where they can refuse to serve God in the right way. 
because they want to get on top of this uh, jittery. They want to get on top. They'll do things that are totally contrary to what it is that they should be doing. Beyonce was raised in a church. She was raised singing in a church choir. She sang all over the country in church choirs. But something happened. Something happened. Something happened. Moses, as a prophet, had began to understand that cost and price were not necessarily the same thing. There's a lesson here for all saved folks who take the Great Commission series. That lesson is crucial to knowing the cost of yes. That lesson says, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. There's a cost involved in that. There's a cost involved. There's time involved in there. There's money. There's effort. There are your feelings that are involved in that. It's going to cost you those things. And preach the gospel to all creatures. It's going to cost you. As a saint of the Lord, you're called to a life of holiness. And holiness is not always easy. Because holiness means that sometimes there are some things that you want to do that you just can't do. There's some place you want to go, you just can't go. There's some things you want to look at that you just cannot look at. There's some things you want to listen to, you just cannot listen to because the vessel needs to remain clean. Holiness calls you something. Some things that you must sacrifice even if it's not a sin, you have to sacrifice that thing because someone will view it as a sin. It'll cause them to be separated from God because they're judging you unfairly. My God, my God. Paul must have seen this. And Moses definitely must have foreseen this because the words in Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He must have reckoned the, the cost of yes and the suffering of a yes in these present times wasn't worth as much as the price of no in future time. You've got to understand that there is a serious price of no. A serious price of no. When you get the price of yes, oh my God, I gotta help somebody. When you get the price of yes, see, see the thing is that when you say yes to the Lord, that means that He owes you, He takes care of you, He pours into you. Hallelujah. That means that there's gonna be some things that He's gonna bless you with that no one else is gonna be blessed with. When you say yes to Him on the cross, then the price that He owes you is gonna be worth more than silver and gold. The price that He owes you is going to be a sacrifice of His love and His hope in you. The price that he gives you. Moses must have reckoned that the cost of yes and the suffering of no in present time wasn't worth as much as the price of no in future times. His yes was the catalyst for releasing his people out of captivity. So the cost of no may have meant a longer time of suffering for the people of Israel. Oh, God's will was going to be done, but it may have been 40 years later with someone else. Huh? A price of no would have caused more of his people to be beaten, more of his people to be killed. The price of no. Paul once said, and I'm paraphrasing that, if eating meat offends those who you are trying to reach, then refrain from eating it in their presence. Huh? Even small things that you know that would not send you to hell. There's nothing wrong with you making a sacrifice and saying, I know this is not a sin, but I'm not going to do this because it's going to cause my brother Joe, my sister Susan, my cousin Fred to fall. I'm going to refrain from doing it. It's an easy, it's an easy wrong, but I'm going to do this for the price that's going to be received. Certainly refrain from some things are not wrong. But when you refrain from the purpose of winning someone to Christ, it's well worth it. Huh? Your liberty, sometimes even your peace, has to be sacrificed for the greater good. It can be a very expensive choice because a yes may cost you everything on this side of the joy. Okay, yes, Lord, I have to say yes, Lord, so it may cost me my job. Yes, Lord, it's going to cost me our friends. I'm going to have to say yes, Lord, it may cost me even my very health. I have to say yes to what it is that he's called me to do. Oh, my God, it's not easy sometimes going up and saying yes to everything that the Lord has for you. But I know that it's well worth it in the end. I know that in the end, I'm going to be a winner in the end because I'm saying yes right now. My God, hallelujah. Now that we've talked about the, or looked somewhat at the cost of yes, let's look at the price of no. Earlier I explained to you that cost and price are not necessarily the same thing. 
Because cost lacks the benefit of profit. Huh? The Bible says, what good does it oh, a man to what? To gain the world, but to lose his soul. Huh? What good does it profit him? Whereas he has the cost, he has the benefit of the world, but he lost his very soul. It does him absolutely no good because if a man lives 70, even 100 years or so, even if he lives that long, it is not, it pales in comparison to eternity. And eternity spent away from God. My God, my God. The Lord Jesus was teaching, he talked about the rich young man. And the rich young man approached him and said, well, Lord, what must I do to enter into heaven? Right. After Jesus told him the cost, he went away. Huh? When he told him the cost had to be yes, he told him to, to go and sell everything that he had and, and give those things to the poor. Jesus didn't ask him to sell everything he had and give it to him. He said, sell everything you have and give to the poor. My God. And he said, your riches will be in glory. See, you've got to understand that in order for your riches to be laid up for you in glory, you have to say yes to the Lord and pay the cost on this side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus then spoke about the camel in the eye of the needle. The response of Peter stated what was in the heart of all the disciples. They said, we've left our jobs. Jesus, we left our houses. We, Jesus, we, we left all our wealth, our fortunes. We left our inheritance. We left all these things behind. We left our, our, our family. We left all these things. And, and these things caused us a lot to say yes to you, Lord. Now, what do I get out of it? Oh, in other words, they were saying, what can you, what are you going to do for me? Jesus told them that what they had given up would be given back to them. And not only given back to them in the message that it was given them in the first place. He said, 100 fold, you'll receive back what it is to do. So therefore, what you have on this side, what you have to say, I'm going to give up for the cause of the kingdom on this side, I tell you, it ain't worth nothing compared to the blessing that God is going to bestow upon you. But in the same light, beyond the cause to know, is what ultimately, what will, what it will ultimately, what the price will be. Beyond the cause to know, it's ultimately what the price of no would be. Because saying no has a price. Since we all now know the real difference between the two words of cost and price, is that price also includes the profit. The profit includes the power and authority of all heaven that backs your godly decisions of yes. The benefit of being raptured and other godly favors is part of the profit. Saying no will attribute to all the curses found in Deuteronomy 28. Cursed in the city, cursed in the field, cursed when you come, cursed when you go. Your hands will be cursed, your blessings will be cursed, your children will be cursed. My God, my God. Saying no will make you like the wealthy man who abused Lazarus because he lifted up his eyes in hell. Saying no will allow the enemy access to your life and the lives of your children. Saying no will cause death to all that you do. Your seeds will be put in vain. Saying no, even your good seed will produce weeds and thistles. Saying no will curse your blessed inheritance. Saying no will curse your peace of mind. Saying no, you'll be in fear all the time. Saying no to the things of God. Like David, Christians should reject the armor of this world, preferring the whole armor of God. Like Daniel, Christians should reject the world's dainty fare. They should reject the meats that were unto the king. And like Jesus, they should say, no to the offer of corruptible power. The crown of righteousness is at stake here. The crown of glory is at stake here. The crown of life is at stake here. So how much would it cost you to say, how much would it cost you to follow Christ? How much would it cost you? How much? How much are you willing to pay to follow Christ? Huh? How much? You know, the bad things that what we esteem more than anything normally is we esteem our friends and what our friends think about us. We esteem what our friends think about us. My God. I had a very good friend. He was my drinking buddy. He was my party buddy. Very good friend. Hallelujah. We ran the streets together. We were, we were, we were good. Good. We were tight that way. Very good friend. I was stationed at Fort Lee, Virginia, and Fort Lee was also the training, the home for the training people in my career field. I was in a lucrative position at Fort Lee, Virginia, and 
he happened to come into school because we were in the same career field. And when I called him and, and saw where he was at, I said, I'm coming over to see you. Got this information, I'm coming over to see you, man. And I, when I went to see him, the first thing he said, he tried to hand me a bomb. I said, no, I don't do that no more. I can't do that no more. And then the next thing he said, well, we're going out to party. I said, no, I don't do that no more. Then I asked him, I said, are you saved? You talking about somebody's eyes batting real fast, somebody cleaned out their ears on both sides with real extra long Q-tips? Are you saved? It blew him out the water. I said, you know, what I found is that the price of yes is worth more than silver and gold. The price of yes will prevent me from going to hell. The price of yes. See, those things that we did in the past, all it was doing was condemning us. It was causing us to rush head on into hell. All those things that we did in the past, my God. I, I, I told him this because it touched my heart because I wanted to reach him for the cause of Christ. And he rejected me fully. Full out rejected me. Well, you're going to do what you're going to do, brother. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. That's a powerful rejection from somebody who was a good friend. We were good friends. Matter of fact, we were friends before we both arrived in Panama because we happened to end up on the very same flight arriving to the country of Panama with our families, both our families. So we were real good friends. But my friend wasn't really, wasn't ready to give up that lifestyle. My friend wasn't ready to give up all those so-called simple sins, those sins that had short-term benefit. He wasn't ready to give up those things. He was not ready to give it up and say yes unto the Lord. To be honest, some people have a deeper a deeper call in their lives. Some people have a deeper reason of saying yes than others. I understand that. But the basic minimum thing that we can do is say yes to the cause of the Lord. That's the minimum thing we can do. See, see, you're the songwriter said, you're a man, your hallelujah don't mean nothing without a yes. You have to say yes first and foremost in order to allow salvation to come. You have to say yes to, 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 to allow the Lord to clean you up. You have to say yes. You have it within yourself to say yes. Make no mistakes. It's going to cause you, though. It's going to cause you. Being a Christian is not something that you do on a dare. Being a Christian is not something you do all half-hearted. Jesus said, count up a call. Being a Christian is not a hobby that you do on Sundays. You're only a Christian on Sundays between this hour and that hour. And by the time the Super Bowl or some other sports event come on, you're no longer a saved Christian. Being a Christian means that you're at it each and every day. Being a Christian means that you're going to be inconvenienced at times. You're going to be asked. You're going to be tested. You're going to be pressed. You're going to be pushed. Being a Christian means a whole lot more. I say it's not a hobby, something you do during your free moments. It's a full-time commitment. You can't just be saved on Sunday morning and then expect your children to be godly. You can't be. You can't just be saved on, on days where, where it's, uh, you're having Bible study and then expect your children to be godly because your children see how you live your life, my God. You can't just be saved on Sunday morning or saved sometimes when you post to Facebook or whatever. You can't just be saved when you post in your Twitter account. Oh, you got to be saved full time. It's a full time thing. Your yes means that you put your hand to the gospel plow. You put your hands to the gospel plow. Means you put your hands to the gospel plow and you don't let go. You can't hold on to sometimes. Your being a Christian means that you represent everything that the Lord stands for. Not just some things, but everything that he stands for. And you, you know the thing is that it can cost you your friends. Somebody say it can cost me my friends. Oh my God, my God. It can cause you your family, oh my God. It can cause you your wealth. It can cause you your status in the community, my God. You may be in a position of prominence, but it can cause you that. I, my God, I feel you, Lord. Thank you, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but if it costs me my life, uh, I'm not going to give up. I can't turn back. I won't turn back. I refuse to turn back. Hallelujah. I'm going to stay in the race. I'm going to keep on pressing for the call of the heart which is in Christ.
Christ Jesus. I'm going to keep on saying yes to his will, yes to his way. I'm going to keep on giving glory and praise and honor. Hallelujah. Hey, my God, my God. I know I'm going to keep on worshiping him. I'm going to keep on laying out before him. I'm going to keep on putting more value in him than I put in silver. More value than I put in gold. I'm going to keep on glorifying him. Hallelujah. I'm going to put my trust uh, hallelujah, in him. I'm not going to put my trust in this whole world. Because this whole world is not my home. I really am just a stranger passing through. I'm going to keep on giving him glory and praise and honor and worshiping him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to hold on. Somebody say, hold on. Hold on. Grab your neighbor and tell him, hold on. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell him, hold on. Hold on just for a little while longer. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, we're going to make it through this mess. We're going to make it through this trial. We're going to make it through this tribulation. We're going to make it through this situation. All you got to do is hold on. Ha. Hallelujah. Hold on to his unchanging hand. Hold on to his merciful hand. Because this old world gonna pass away, but not one word of the Lord shall fail. Not one promise of the Lord shall fail. Not one dream of the Lord shall fail. Not one blessing of the Lord shall fail. Not one keeping of the Lord shall fail. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. The price. The price. The cost of yes. The price of no. The cost of yes. It's gonna cost you. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Yes, it's going to cost you this world. It's going to cost you this world, but it also costs you the damnation of this world. But the one thing about serving the Lord, when you say yes, when you serve him, what you need and what you want, that is godly, is going to come your way. The Bible clearly says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Not just some things, but every blessing that you need shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That means you're going to say yes to the cause. I'm going to say yes to the cause. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I I pray that you enjoyed the word today and that it touches you within a deep place in your heart and it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.